Hey, what up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who've been here before, if you're new, welcome. My name is Tyler. I go to Columbia Law School and have been documenting my journey and just trying to provide resources and what my experience has been trying to get into law school. The channel is almost at a thousand subscribers, which is crazy. <laughs> I never thought that this would happen um, on this channel, but as you can see, this is my first video at my place in New York. You can see all of my textbooks for next semester. Spring starts tomorrow. So I wanted to make a video today. We're going to be talking about the first semester of law school, Columbia's culture, my experience with classes, moving from California to New York. And so yeah, all that's going to be covered in this video. So if you're interested, be sure to keep watching and I'll put chapters uh, so you can skip around if you need. Okay, so first I know this is like such a new background, so it might be a little jarring because um, it's so different from all my other videos, but my desk is set up in the living room area, which we have kind of like living, dining, entertaining space. I don't know. And then our bedroom is on the other wall. I made this painting. It's it's still a work in progress, but it's been fun, like getting settled in New York. I really love this apartment. I'll do an apartment tour one day if you're interested. Anyway, I'm going to start this video. So as I said, we're going to be talking about uh, my experience at Columbia and classes and then New York in general. So um, and then I'll do like a little wrap up of maybe just like tips or things that I found helpful or lessons I learned. So if you don't know, I'm a non-traditional student. I was out of school for five years, which honestly, I was nervous, like going back into a school setting. I haven't had a ton of structure in all honesty. I've been able to make all my own deadlines. I manage my own work projects. And so getting those syllabi the first week and having very um, tangible deadlines and things I had to complete uh, very quickly was a little jarring. So my strategy for the semester was essentially to treat it as much of a nine to five as I could. I live off campus, which I can talk about later. But as far as classes go, I really tried to just have a structure um, and separation. Like I didn't want to bring work stuff home or school things home if I didn't have to. And so really it ended up kind of being an eight to six depending on my classes. But I'd usually get to campus um, in the morning, do my readings. I'd start school around like 11, a little before 11. And then just depending on the day, you know, if I had a break in the afternoon, I would try to do some readings or whatever assignments I had. Yeah, and then I would go to class. So overall, I do think that that was like super reasonable. I didn't find it to be um, so overwhelming. Like it felt a lot more manageable than I expected. I will say this upcoming semester, I have an extra course. So, you know, TBD, <laughs> watch that video in the summer, maybe. Uh, Maybe it's less manageable than I expect, but I found that to be a really helpful strategy for me. I know some people who hate reading in the morning, they did all their readings at night or they did their readings on the weekend. But as someone who moved here with a partner, I didn't want my weekends to be taken up with school because that's when they're off work and they work a nine to five. So it worked out pretty well, keeping our work lives separate and still getting what we needed to get done done. Um, and then enjoying like our personal time together. That was really important to me. And now I'll talk about like the stress of class. Like I think coming into law school, all I heard was like how awful 1L is, how overwhelming everything is and I definitely think that can be true but I also think that maybe there aren't a lot of people talking about like you you can manage it like it did seem like a lot of the stress is self-imposed in a lot of ways you know depending on the grades you want or need depending on the type of work you want to go into or the school you're at or all those types of things or just how like much you care about your cold calls right like if you want to have like gleaming and like amazing answers in front of the class then your cold calls will probably matter but you know if you're prioritizing other things and you mess up a cold call which isn't part of your grade. It's just different approaches. So I had my like big intense cold call actually the first day of class. So that was out of the way in my large course. And I just kind of like got to enjoy the rest. Also, I think it depends on how many extracurriculars. So stress can definitely be compounded by like jumping into things. I think I bit off a little bit more than I could chew at the beginning of the semester. Um, I joined a specialized moot court, which just doing the tryouts and everything was a lot of work at the beginning, but um, has since like evened out and isn't as demanding. Um, if you're doing a lot of club events, like there's always something you can go to, like whether it's a lunch event or a talk or a webinar or a professional development thing or interviews, like there's always, always, always things you can go to. I found it helpful to sometimes just say, you know, I'm not going to that. Like there was even a midterm that wasn't graded. It was optional. It was only two hours and I didn't think it would be super helpful. So I just didn't go. You just have to pick and choose your battles. You have limited brain space and energy and so you just have to remember like whatever you're choosing to spend that on is beneficial because it is beneficial to you it can be really easy though to like look at your peers and be like oh they're doing job interviews or they're going to this firm event or they're going to this public interest thing or they're writing this essay already like it's it's fine <laughs> like honestly like um you just have to do you and uh it will work out yeah and i think that's like everything in, and i will say one more thing about school so as far as like topics i guess i expected law school 
Like I didn't expect it to be like undergrad, but I expected it to be similar in some ways as far as like discourse or the way you engage with the material. And I've found that to be really lacking so far, which may change in my upper level classes, um, second and third year. But you know, first year it is kind of like you're being spoon fed. Um, just like, here's what you need to know for the exam. And depending on the professor, you know, maybe you're talking about contracts in a really critical way. My professor didn't do that. It was like, this is very matter of fact. It's what you need to know. Here you go. You know, same thing with civil procedure. Like maybe you have a professor who gets really into the strategy or like dynamics um, that civil procedure can have. Or maybe you just have like, here's the procedure. Like this is what you need to know for the test. So I will say it does depend on your professor a lot, which you don't usually I think and primarily no one has control over in their first year so I enjoyed my professors this first semester uh, second semester I don't know jury's still out like I haven't taken the classes but the reviews are critical <laughs> But yeah, I'll just say like, I didn't find that we engage with the material as much as I thought we would compared to undergrad, but I was a communication and theology major. So a lot of those were like critical approaches or like queer focused perspectives on those topics. So, and it's just like a lot of reading and busy work, honestly, like so much of law school is just busy work, which I was kind of surprised by like writing paper that's just pass fail. So if I'm going to invest my time into like a class that has a letter grade or a pass fail paper, it's like, you know, sorry about the paper. I don't think it did poorly on my papers, but I'm just saying the way that everything is structured does really change how you prioritize your tasks and what you're hoping to get out of things. So, you know, like I said, there's always something to be doing. So you really do have to pick and choose. I feel like I'm pretty clear on what I want to get out of law school. So I've been pretty happy with how I've navigated so far, but I will say there are times when a lot of things come up all at once and it can be very daunting and overwhelming. Okay, now I want to get into the culture of Columbia. Um, this one I find very interesting because I think even going into Columbia, I was really nervous about some of the reputational issues the school has, right? People say it's very competitive, it can be very cutthroat, it can be very stifling. Like, as far as my peers are concerned, I have not found that to be true. Like, these are some of the, like, nicest, smartest people I've met. Like, it's crazy. Like, I am not typically one who feels um, imposter syndrome. Like, there's definitely times where I feel anxiety and, like, I'm ill-equipped to be doing something, but never, like, oh, I am, like, clearly the dumbest person in the room. And there was times when I would just be looking around and I'm like, what is going on here? You know, and I will say that's probably not healthy. And I worked through that and stuff and I think it's fine. But law school is crazy because there's so many people who are so smart and usually pretty well spoken or like great writers or great debaters or like all these things. And I don't know, like I didn't have a ton of conceptions about like Ivy League, right? Like I did go to a private undergrad, but was raised like public school in California my whole life. I only went to that private undergrad they gave me more scholarship money and I thought like small class sizes would be nice. You know, being on the West Coast, like being from the West Coast, I didn't hear much about the Ivy League schools and didn't know um, really what to make of it. Like, it seems like there's a lot of like hubbub sometimes around it and like, like people are super into it, which I get like the name and brand recognition is like super important. I don't know, like it's just such a different place to come from than where I'm from in California. It didn't seem as important. So it, it is really weird being at a school like this that feels a little like pious in some ways and like gatekeepy, right? Like it's like so many good careers or good opportunities will just come to the people at this school just because they like got into the school, you know, which I would be lying to say I didn't go because I wanted job security and things like that. But it is crazy. Like, I don't know. I, I have a vivid memory of orientation and the dean talking about like the political climate right now. And like, you guys are on law school and like, you need to save democracy. And I remember being like, what is going on here? Like, you know, like, save democracy. Like, first of all, why couldn't you guys, like, have people take an ethics class or something 30 years ago? I don't know. And two, like, when I'm around campus every day, everyone's just trying to find free pizza at lunch. I'm like, these, we're gonna save democracy? Like, these people? Like, everyone's just looking for free food. So that is, like, crazy to me. I don't know, like, just the standards and expectations, I guess, of a school like this. You know, and I think it does have pros, like I said, like, job security, but there's also cons. Like, like especially being a queer person, like, I definitely represent so differently, I feel like, at school. It's very muted and toned down in comparison to like what I would do in San Diego or just like at work and my old advertising jobs and that is like annoying because like just looking around even it, it feels like a very heteronormative like not sterile the building is sterile but like like bland I don't know like the, like it doesn't it feels bland and that is one thing about the building the building <laughs> I will say Columbia Law School facilities are like they're so ugly <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I hate to be like, um, you know, that person, but like the brutalist, like concrete building and it's like tiny and the library, like the law library is awful and like there's concrete blocks falling off the facade on the outside and we can't use one of the stairs because of it. it's like a mess and they're gonna redo the whole library which will be done when i graduate so that's just gonna be under construction which is fine i don't go to the law library but just to like maintain sanity like the facilities like the main columbia campus is like really stunning and really nice to be on and the law campus facilities are like like it's a pretty big boot it's a flop <laughs> so anyway so if you want to go to a school that has like really pretty architecture and like that kind of gothic or like cathedral vibe like columbia is not it for you <laughs> but if you want to be in a really diverse city which is what mattered to me and like serving a really diverse surrounding community yeah columbia is great so pros and cons right Cool, let's get into living in New York then, since we already talked about it. I personally really love living in New York. Um, it's winter right now. It honestly hasn't gotten too cold yet. We haven't had any like days in the 20s yet, so maybe this opinion will change. Um, but even commuting, I live off campus, commuting to school every day. It's like not a long commute. I prefer it. It makes me feel like separate. Like I said, I have that separation between school and like decompressing. I really love this apartment. Like I put my whole freaking bussy into like decorating and making this place feel comfy and like home. And we just got really lucky like our neighbors are nice we've met some of them like it's a nice walk to the subway like all these things that are just like nice to have the grocery store is not far away just like quality of life things which i think is important especially in such a intense program so i personally love living off campus i do think that that does come with the trade-off of like not being as social with my peers um which honestly i see as like super unfortunate i really love the people i've met at school but it can just be difficult when i like already commute home and people want to hang out at a bar near campus or something i'm like ooh, sorry so and then as far as like the city goes in general um you know being here in the summer a little bit and getting to do some like free events at the park and then as it's gotten into winter and like having friends visit and just going out and about like it's honestly been super nice i find a lot of comfort taking the subway home every day and seeing like hundreds of people just like exhausted after work and being like wow there's millions of people here who are not doing law school i find that to be very comforting i don't know and also like i said as i continue through this program i really wanted to be situated somewhere to give back to diverse communities and that's like a really important part of my legal ethos or professional ethos different things for everyone so just make sure to keep those in mind when you're looking at schools um, if you want to come to columbia you know feel free to drop questions in the comments i will answer them like we could do an ask me anything about columbia doesn't matter to me um i would just like love to be a resource as much as i can because you know as like a non-traditional queer student who moved across the country i feel like i can speak to a lot of different just like experiences going to school so would be happy to share them because you know it can be very daunting and intimidating also you're hearing the new york like radiators turn on that is a really wild thing like not to control your heat in new york in any case love the city it's insane like you know i'm coming from like la and san diego like i love those cities but going home for Christmas was so jarring like seeing palm trees taller than buildings was like <laughs> you know like culture shock because the buildings here are just huge and like dominate so much of your skyline and view so yeah but if you have further questions I would love to answer them um, if there's things you want me to talk about specifically whether that's cold calls or whether that's classes or whether that's moving or doing school with a partner or like transitioning from work to school feel free comment them below I read all my comments um, even if I don't respond to them sometimes I get some weird comments you guys I see them <laughs> so um, so comment them or you can hit me up on on my socials which are linked uh, below I believe um, feel free to hit me up DM me on those um, some of you do reach out and it's like so nice just like seeing your questions or like hearing about your experiences because I honestly started these videos during COVID just to like document and share with family and to like remind myself of like the purpose of doing all this and so it's so cool to see it become like something helpful and like a community that I can like talk to and we can like keep in touch and cheerlead each other, you know, cause like it is a lot of work. So it's really good to have people supporting you. But anyway, I'm going to sign off because this video is getting a little long and those radiators sound like they're going to explode. They won't probably. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. If we hit a thousand subscribers, that is like crazy to me. So feel free to subscribe if you aren't to the channel already. Yeah. And thanks so much. And I'll see you in the next video. I'm hoping to do a day in the life one. Um, now that I have like a schedule for like each semester and I like and I'm not just like being thrown about all the time yeah so that's my goal and thanks I'll see you in the next one bye